Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to welcome you all here today. And uh, what a mess. Like, you know, it's, it's the topic of every conversation. And all I'm hoping is over the next few weeks that it's, that it's going to go to bed. But unless we all put our hands up and start telling the truth, because every week, week in and week out, there's more information coming and we're all blaming everybody. And I think it's about time that we all put our hands up and say, listen, you have 1,800 employees there at the moment, is, and we have to consider them as well. What makes me very angry, these are the workers that helped out E to where they are today. And over the last number of years, they've been looking for additional crew and, and resources and everything else to help out E and, and all these lies and backhands and everything else. It, 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 really, it, it really has it's put a bad, bad taste. Can I ask each one of you, are you fully aware that, that out E publicly, publicly humiliated people years ago and even sometimes sent people to jail? for not paying the, the OTE licence. You know, like, like and, and look at now, all these white collar people sitting up here at the moment is and Like, how do you feel, like years ago, of the big knock on the door, come in here, taking their father or mother away and put them in jail. And look at it, look at, it at the moment, hundreds and maybe thousands and millions of money gone missing. And now you, you, everybody's getting all scots free. Well, all we really want to know is, where is the money going? Talking to the public out there, the public are saying to me out there at the moment is, We've got a commercial director who doesn't actually direct any commercial dealings, and we've a chief financial officer who doesn't monitor our finances. Like as I said to you last week, that was my own business. Is the Street gone? Finito gone? Like it makes it makes no sense whatsoever. And do you honestly think that people out there are stupid? Like how could you hide this money? Like you know this 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 was going to come out at some stage. Ryan Tuberty, the party the best. OT personality been for the last 10 or 15 years. It was going to come out. And do you honestly think that people were foolish and said this wasn't going to happen? <clears throat> you've got forging invoices, you've got uh, off-balance sheets, currency, you've, you've secret payments. There's, some, there's something seriously, seriously wrong out there. I'm going to ask you today is please stop hiding behind your legal privileges, stand up, be accountable, face the music, and march on and be wiser. And I said here last week that I felt as though that Dee Foles was being pushed under a bus. I'm actually, I feel a bit more that she's been pushed under the bus even more today. And I'm just going to say, like, uh, like there, was a, there was a poll done last weekend, and the public were asked the question, who, who, who are they blaming? And at the moment, they're blaming news. The, the, the executive, the board, they're blaming news because 73% of them are saying that it's, it's, the, it's the board of management, and only 11 or 12% is blaming Dee Foles. So, I, I, I know there's a, there's a letter out there at the moment that Dee Forbes give in, and it seems to be pointing the finger at Ryan Tuberty in that there. And so there's a few questions I want to ask you at the moment. Is and, uh, uh, what's, what's the best way to do here at the moment? Is uh, uh, did anyone did did anyone know about the honest statement of these three payments years ago? So is, is there anyone knows about them? That's, that's the question I want to ask you at the moment. Is and and, and Brenda, this is your first day coming here. Sorry, I'll call you Miss Brenda O'Keefe. You were the CEO from 2012 to 2020, and effectively you're second in command of D Forbes. And listen, your evidence is going to be very important today, and your honesty is going to be very crucial. First question I want to ask you is: Did the crazy salaries predate D Forbes? If, if your question is, did those fee rates for contractors exist before D? They did, and I just want to say, and I know they're high, but. Together with the previous Director General, we made a commitment to the government and to the public that we would reduce those top talent earnings from 2008, and we did that through the organised, through negotiation and through editorial changes, etc. We reduced the top talent fees. I can't recall the exact years, but between 2008 and perhaps 2016, now correct me if I'm wrong on the dates, but we reduced them by over 30%. So to answer your question, they were higher previously, and we brought them down. And we continued through this negotiation process that had started, Ryan Tuberty's was part of it, with other presenters. We wanted to reduce that further. So the, the endeavour was, and the, the aim was to reduce top talent salaries, uh, it's not salaries, top talent, talent fees further. But uh, Ryan Tuberty's salary went up to over 500,000 again. The question I want to ask you also, also is, uh, it's been said that you played a central role on the Ryan Tuberty contract, and you admitted that earlier on, you were involved in the negotiations <coughs> straight away. And uh, did that include the guarantee seventy five thousand in commercial income? And can you can you collaborate in your involvement? Deputy, I think my statement is quite fulsome in that regard to say 
that I was aware of the commercial arrangement, but it was before any guarantees, any rebates, or any commitments were made, or any, I think it's quite clear in the statement that I wasn't involved in the guarantee. So you know, you know nothing about the guarantees for Vine Tuberty? Well, per my statement, I was aware that the agent was looking for a guarantee at the time when I left the organisation, but the organisation were not, uh, <coughs> did not want to give that guarantee at that point in time. After that, I don't know what happened. I, I left the organisation. I, I promise I'm not trying to put words in your mind, but I'm asking you a question again. Were you aware of the 75,000 for Vine Tuberty? I'm not sure which one. So, I, okay, I will. I will. So it doesn't matter which one. Okay. Are, you, are you aware of was the I aware? I was aware of the potential rebate of 75,000 to Renault because they needed the first year of the deal to be cost neutral. I was aware of that. The, the rebate of that took the form of a credit note after I left. I'm clearly stating here and have done in my statement that that should have been, and there was no intention otherwise, that should have been presenter earnings. Okay. Okay. On the other two payments, that were subsequently made in 2022, which is over two years, over two years after I left the organisation. I was not aware of those. Well, the committee had evidence how the payments were, 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 were uh, presented as a consultancy fee on the invoices to OT to a UK bar to account. Uh, to me, that's an act of deceive. So, I, excuse me, Deputy, can I just stop you there? Yeah. I am not the current CFO of RTE nor have I been since 2020. I think my statement covers that. So you may direct, with respect, the questions at the, the incoming, the current CFO of the organisation. So when you've seen these invoices coming in for the money, so I was asking one simple question. Yeah. Did you see the invoices coming in? No. You didn't see the invoices coming in? No. That's okay then, I'll leave you alone. Anyway. And you've, you've no update on the 120,000. You said you left at that stage with the 120,000 they stand in the brain tubbity. Have you any update on that there? As far as you're concerned, when you left, that 120,000 was still there for, for brain tubbity. Is that right? When I, at the point of the negotiations, when I left, we were trying to negotiate the cancellation of the exit payment as part of the negotiation. So Mr. Tubbity was due an exit payment. Uh, at the end of his contract, and as part of the negotiations, we were trying to waive that exit fee. We were trying to ask him to waive it so that we didn't owe it. That would represent savings. They were part of the overall negotiations, and when I left, that hadn't been concluded. Well, the one good thing I'm going to say today is you come in today and you answer the questions, and that's all we asked for. And we asked other people to come in, and they're refusing to come in. Uh, Richard Collins. Uh, uh, one of my one, one of our deputies asked earlier on about uh, about the Baltimore account and about the three Baltimore accounts, and you told me and you started talking about <coughs> shop, shopping and everything else, right? Uh, my wife doesn't go to three shops in one day. Does your wife go to three shops in one day? Like I'm not being smart. To me, that was one of the most silliest answers I ever ever had before. Us. You, you you knew the question last week about the Baltimore accounts, and you knew there was three Baltimore accounts, and now you're you're, you're talking about shopping. I'm not, I, to me, that's an absolute disgrace, the answer you give my deputy lawyers. Do you really think we're going to fall for that there? You, you, last week, just put your hand up and say, you told a lie. No, I didn't tell any well, lie. Sorry. Well, no, you, did, 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 no, did, did you exaggerate the truth? You've asked me a question, so yeah. let me answer. Yeah. There's one barter account. There's three companies that feed into that. From a financial point of view, I look at a consolidated view there. All the transactions relating to the barter account are captured in what's presented, and they're available for audit. There's no extra accounts that have come, you know, suddenly emerged in the last week. Everything was visible there. So you, it's just terminology we're talking about here. But when you were asked the question last week about the Baltimore account, so yeah. just, 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 just let me finish. Yeah. You were asked a question last week, and you knew there was three accounts. Why didn't you just say there was three accounts? Because you knew it was going to come back and haunt you. Did you think, did you, like, this is a very experienced committee at the moment, just a simple why did you try, why did you not just come out and say yes, uh, there's one Baltimore account, but there's three, there's three parts of the Baltimore account. Yeah, look, I, I wasn't trying to mislead anyone. The way I look at it is a consolidated view, and there are three companies that feed into it, but I don't look at the individual companies. I look at the overall piece. What does it all add up to? But, but when, when you so see... So I wasn't trying to well, know, mislead or hide anything there. I'm just looking, I'm talking about the well, barter account. As, as a lay person, to me, right, yeah. it, I'm, I'll be honest, and the public out there, it does seem that you're hiding it. And I, I'm being honest with you at the moment, but I, I just think that the answer that you give my colleagues here today and talking about your wife going shopping, someone going shopping, I just thought it was a very, very bad. Uh, I'm not sure this is a very, very serious situation. Well, sometimes these issues are, are 
they're complex. I was trying to simplify complex. it, to, you know, to explain to people. At the end of the day, the three companies went through the same process and the transactions were visible in the accounts and they could be audited. Have you any... One bar, sorry, just to yeah. finish there, yeah. one company, all the payments were made out of one company. The other two companies, there was no payments made out. So, I go back to this again. Is, uh, uh, can I ask you, uh, have previous orders before Grant Thornton, uh, was there any light taken before of any, 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 anything, any, anything you know, disguised or beforehand? Was there anything come up before, Divine Tubbity one before? And basically, what I'm trying to say at the moment is, is there, is, is, is there anything out there that we should know that's going to come forward? Like, like, I'm not, like he's, got, he's got orders to sign off. Can I ask you, what were the orders looking to sign off? Sorry, can you just repeat the what? I, I, yeah. I'm not trying to explain. Like, yeah. uh, like he, he, he's done audits, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that there was audits done before. Yes. Told you. And how come the previous orders? Like, I'm not trying to be smart. It was easy enough to find, right? So how come the previous orders couldn't <coughs> find the discrepancies? I can't understand that. Who signed it? Like, who signed them off? Well, so if an, order, if an order comes to you and signs them off, who in order to E would, would sign off and accept the, the, the sign-offs? Well, the, ultimately, the board sign off. The, the board approved the accounts and then the auditors signed them. Yeah, but so, someone goes to the board and recommends the board on behalf of RTE. Is that your good self? Do you, do, you, do, you look at the, do you look at the order <coughs> after the orders are done? Who looks at the orders and checks and says, listen, I have my own company, I get people in to do the audits. It's, I'm sure there's someone in RTE signs the orders well, off and the, recommend it to the management. The, to, the to accounts accept. are prepared by the finance team and then they're brought for, they're brought for audit and then they're presented to the, 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 to the board and the auditors will raise any issues they have at that stage. And when the board are happy that they've gone through all the issues with the auditors, then they'll sign the accounts. That's the system. It, it, to me, it's, 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 there's, something, there's, there's something wrong here. And, and, and in fairness, we, we keep teasing and teasing and teasing and let's hope over the next few weeks that it does come out. Uh, did, did someone in OTE after five years hand a car in yesterday? Who was that? For GDPR, we can't say. So if the PAC asks you tomorrow, will you answer the PAC tomorrow? Yeah, we, yeah, we can't disclose the person's name, but I just wanted to make a full disclosure that that happened. What, what, what was the car handed in after five years yesterday? Yes, it was. Okay. It wasn't your car, was it? Was it which? It wasn't yours, no? It wasn't your car, no? No, it wasn't my car. Uh, just, 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 that's just, just the last question. Yeah. So the last question. Yeah. Uh, regarding the OTE and the Reynolds and then the Tobity contract, uh, why was uh, why was it signed off by a member of NK Management after the payment was made, was made to Ryan Tobity in the 21st of the 4th, 23? Uh, this, uh, did you generate this target after the fact to make the payment? So why, that's, that's my question is, why was this signed off on behalf of Ryan Tubby? Why How come Ryan Tubby didn't sign it off? How come uh, NK Management signed it off instead of Ryan Tubby? Uh, well, I can, I can answer that actually. Um, uh, Ryan Tubby was not, we, we didn't deal with Ryan Tubby on this. We were dealing with NK Management on behalf of Ryan Tubby. Um, I've already admitted that I should have signed the contract. It was signed by the client. And when um, we were um, getting information together to go to the Grand Thornton review, uh, Noel Kelly obviously had already been also been contacted, and they sent in the signed contract at that point. So I think it was related to the review that they, they realised that they needed to send us a signed copy. Okay. 